Hello, my name is Nikolai Steiner. Welcome to this uh, introduction to academic writing. Academic writing is a, a very defined uh, discipline which encompasses a number of elements which uh, should be uh, adhered to. But before writing, of course, comes reading. And the uh, question is, how do you read? How do you even, uh, where do you uh, begin reading in your pile of literature? And then once you start writing, of course, the question is, how, how do I begin? Some may have heard of the concept of writer's block when you simply do not know how to start. Uh, in this process, of course, it's important also to consider how you structure your writing. Um, and uh, last but not least, how you stop writing. Uh, and then uh, ultimately there are some formal aspects as to how you format your academic texts. Uh, and all of this is part of the uh, process of academic writing. Enjoy. This presentation will cover uh, three main questions. First, how do I read? Then, how do I structure my material? And finally, how do I write? So, how do I read? Well, obviously, before you start writing, there is some preparation to be done. First, you must uh, define your topic, uh, the subject which you're writing about. Uh, you must also define your particular angle on, on the topic, your intent, because otherwise uh, the topic may be too broad for you to really filter out what is relevant for you to put in your, in your paper. And uh, finally, you need to do a literature review. You need to actually find the relevant literature for you to read as a basis for, uh, for your writing. So, once you have uh, all your literature, a pile of books and papers, whatever, uh, then where do you start? Here it's uh, helpful to consider that there are actually different kinds of literature. On the most basic level, there's an encyclopedias. They offer definitions uh, of concepts. Uh, uh, you can look them up. If you do not know what uh, uh, critical regionalism is, you may look it up in an encyclopedia and you may get a definition. Uh, second, there is overview literature. This is texts that describe, uh, give bold descriptions of subjects, like um, this could be textbooks or uh, readers or popular books uh, for common audiences. So they will offer you a general introduction to concepts, uh, either because they're textbooks used in school or university, or readers uh, where um, editors have compiled, selected different texts uh, addressing a particular subject and compile them into a book or say coffee table books or other kinds of popular books which may give a, like a, a, a broad introduction in common and plain words uh, to the, the the topic that you're interested in so also you must remember that you never just read you always read for a reason and here, it's important to realize that the author's reason for writing a book may not be your reason for reading it. Obviously, um, the author has one perspective, but you may be looking at the author's text from a different angle, and therefore you have a different perspective. Uh, therefore, you should define your purpose. This is actually essential for taking good notes, which form the basis for your writing later on. So uh, you must always bear in mind, why am I taking this note from this text that I'm reading? Um, and uh, basically you should always take notes because otherwise there's no point in reading. So never just read, even if you just quickly cross read a couple of pages from a text to establish whether it's uh, even relevant to you in the first place, take down a quick note that you did it and that the text was about this and this and that seemingly and what your uh, reflections on that uh, is because then you have your note and you may not or you may even uh, reconsult the text at a later time because you took a note about it. 
So, how do you structure your material? Uh, well, uh, you should always have a first idea about a structure. Otherwise, you would not know why you read your books. And uh, well, it's 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 quite banal, really. Uh, you build a synopsis uh, of whatever you think your paper, your text should be about, in order to break it down uh, uh, to to get started. You build a structure. This is uh, the different topics I want to discuss in my paper, but. You also get wiser from reading, so this may trigger a revision of your structure. And you, you shouldn't see that as a failure, because there's there's no reason why you should get it right uh, in the first at the first shot. So keep your synopsis or your 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 uh, outline, keep it open so that you can always revise it, even you whether you shuffle uh, items forth and back up and down on on your. Uh, outline, or whether you t you take them out or add new ones. This is really this is a dynamic tool for you to always keep in the, the most fresh idea of how you think your paper should be structured. Structured. Yeah. So you simply put uh, new headings if needed, or or you you take old headings out or you shovel them somewhere else if 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 you think that's more appropriate uh, as uh, when along when when you read, and and you get a better understanding. Um, therefore, also your note system sh must be flexible. Uh, you should use uh, main topics and subtopics in your notes, or at least make references to to them, so that you can always uh, link your notes to your outline. And you must be able to rearrange your notes and to add new subtopics to your synopsis. So it really, it's all about keeping it a bit messy, you may say, or flexible, so that you can always reorganize your material. So once all of this is more or less in place, then at some point you start writing. So the question comes up, how do I write? Well, first of all, as mentioned in the introduction, uh, academic paper writing is a quite um, stringent process. There are some components that should go in to an academic paper. First of all, of course, you must introduce your topic. This paper is about this, this and that, and from this and this and that angle. <clears throat> then, once you've introduced your topic, you sort of set the case, and here I use the um, metaphor of, uh, of a court case. So you, you, you set the case, say, this is what is at play. This is what I've found out. Um, uh, and, and this is how I've, I've approached my problem, you may say. If, if, if it's a research paper, you may introduce your, your research method. Uh, if it's a, a literature review, you may explain what literature you've been consulting, etc. And then you produce the witnesses, you put the arguments forth. Say it's a literature review and you want to uh, uh, establish uh, who said what. Well, this author said this and that author, author said that. And uh, so they're addressing the same topic but from different perspective. And then you establish your arguments. And this may, must refer back to uh, what you put in the introduction of what this paper is about. So, <clears throat> here you start to engage with the, 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 the subject matter that you've just given an account of, and, and you, you discuss the pros and cons and forth and back. And then, uh, at the end of your uh, paper, you uh, sort of place the verdict. That's what we normally call the conclusion. And here you say, basically, this is what I found out. This is what I can say from having read and discussed these other texts. So there's plenty of different uh, uh, formats for, for academic uh, papers out there. One very common example, particularly in the, in the technical sciences, is one called IMRED. Uh, academics seem to love uh, uh, acronyms. So IMRED is short for Introduction, Methodology, Results, and discussion, and that's pretty much the structure that I've just outlined here above. But 
there are other formats. You can look them up yourselves if you're interested. So, when should I start writing? Well, insights and ideas may grow from reading, but understandings grow from writing. And what does that mean? Well, when you know nothing about your topic, obviously, you need to read in order to uh, acquire that knowledge. But, and, and, and while you read, you may, may get ideas, ah, oh, this reminds me of something else, or maybe this is similar to what I read in another book, and so on. And that's the point in time where you take down ideas for your writing. Uh, however, once you start writing, you put all these ideas, which up until now were mainly summarized from books you read and formulated very briefly uh, in ideas notes for uh, what to write. But only when you start writing, you get the true and deep understanding of your topic, because here you need, now you need to actually formulate your arguments in your own words in full sentences. So, um, this means that writing is not simply just outputting everything you know. This is an integral part of the critical thinking process. Therefore, do not wait to write until you finish reading. Because when you start to write, you may be better to judge what else to read. And as a minimum, you should write ideas notes along the way. So here you see how, how reading, writing notes and writing is really a very integrated process. It's not a linear process where first you do one thing, then you do the second, and finally you do the last. It's, 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 obviously it's a, it's a matter of, 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 uh, of personal preference, but really uh, writing is not something you should uh, postpone until too late because you will lose a lot uh, of the freshness and the ideas and the whatever is in your head while you read and you take your notes uh, if, if you do not immediately start putting it down in paper. I know it can be uh, uh, difficult to think about because you think you want to have an overview before you start writing because otherwise you may start off in the wrong corner and that is true. Maybe you do. But it's so much better to be able to discard all the wrong corners than to not have any corners at all once you start writing. Really, that's what may trigger a, a writer's block. So, and uh, in this context, it's important that you finish your paragraphs or at least make sure that your pins are detailed enough to be understood later. This is the same dilemma you have when taking notes that uh, if, if you're too concise and ever so often you want to be because you think I need to I need to get on to something else then when you reread your stuff if it's if it's not really full paragraphs it may be difficult even for yourself to understand uh, and to 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 to, to uh, extract the meaning of what you've been writing like uh, a day or a week or a month uh, before so also you rarely write in a linear fashion uh, very few people are able to just sit down and write a paper straight from the beginning to the end. Um, so what you do is that you typically write something here, something there, and then slowly uh, you see the contours of the paper and it may change from what you originally thought it would be, which is fine, as long as it's good. And uh, therefore you should write whenever ideas come to you and then rearrange, rearrange your paragraphs and sections afterwards. Because um, again, yes, maybe the particular sentence or paragraph may be discarded at a later point, but it's better to have excess writing, which, writings which you can discard rather than just staring at a blank sheet of paper. So, uh, one thing which is highly recommendable, though, is to always add your references from the start. So, if you write a paragraph which you write with reference to something you read uh, in a, an academic paper, you must always state, if it's not your own original ideas, where do they come from? And you must reference the original text, as indicated here with a bracket, author name and year. 
And the thing is, it's much easier and helps you to remember when you refer and when you interpret uh, or argue. And this essentially also means that it may help you to avoid unintended plagiarism and para paraphrasing. The thing is, if you just write and you think, yeah, I remember that this is from this book that I read by this author and I put the reference later, then when you reread your text, when you re review it and revise it, maybe it's no longer so clear to you. Ah, uh, this w was this my original idea or was it something uh, which I got from some someone else? Uh, and, and that's where the, the ground starts to shake, so to speak. So always put your references right at the beginning. You may use a reference manager for this. Uh, a reference manager basically is a kind of software where you keep uh, all your bibliographical information about all the texts that you've read, book titles, para, uh, uh, um, um, article titles, but also authors, uh, publishing years, uh, uh, pu publishers, whether uh, a publishing house or, or, or a magazine, journal. All these informations, uh, which are called bibliographical information, uh, the, the reference manager will keep track of those, and then you can enter a kind of code, or there are different ways of doing it, There's a, 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 a way to actually get basically what uh, is in the brackets, the author name and the year, from the reference system, and then when you finish writing, the reference manager is also able to generate the full um, reference list or literature list at the end of your paper automatically. This is quite clever because then you may not uh, miss any references out and you may not uh, add references which are not referenced in the text because they shouldn't really be there unless you offer a literature list for further readings which is mostly something you would do in, in say, textbooks. Uh, so, uh, one reference manager is called RefWorks, another is called Zotero, but there's tons of them out there. Typically, your, your, your university service will offer a system which you can use uh, while in university. But there are also uh, free ones, there are open source ones, and there are obviously also commercial ones that you need to pay for. So check it out if you like. It's a good, uh, it's a huge help uh, for formatting your, your references. So the next point is, uh, how do you uh, structure your argument? Well, as already mentioned, different parts of the paper serve different purposes. So um, first you will explain the subject matter. This is what the paper is about, and why and to whom is it relevant. This is a, uh, uh, the structure of the paper, et cetera, et cetera. Really, this is a kind of reader guidance. And, and typically, you would also offer an abstract, and in many uh, journal and conference papers, you, you must. An abstract is like the, 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 the very extracted version in less than 200 words of what the paper is about. And it's put at the top of the paper, just below the, the, the title, so that uh, potential readers can quickly gather an idea of whether the paper is relevant to them or not. Uh, but after that, there's typically like an introduction where you give a more sort of rich account of what the paper is about, how it's structured, etc. So then it comes uh, an explanation of concepts where this is where you give an account of, of what others have written or uh, depending on the structure and the nature of your paper. And in this section, you would typically have many references because uh, um, this is where you, you refer to what you've read and, and you would have few normative or judgmental comments. Uh, this comes later, but you may have some summarizing remarks. Then, uh, once you've explained your concepts, you may discuss your concepts. And here you build arguments, uh, which means that you would typically have less references. And they would maybe go like, A says this, B says that, this is the main point, blah, 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 stuff like that. So, and finally, uh, you will have your conclusion, uh, 
and as already mentioned, this is uh, where you state what you've made of the whole thing. And here, there should be no references. You cannot reference anybody else for your conclusion. The conclusion is your personal sort of verdict. Um, uh, in addition to this, you may have a section, and it may be part of the conclusion, where you add perspectives. Like, this is what I didn't deal with. Uh, this could have some references if, if, if other people dealt with something like that. Uh, this is what might be relevant if the topic were to be expanded, uh, which again would be your judgment and have no references. So really, uh, you should understand uh, the, the nature and role of the different parts of your paper and whether they should be uh, full of references or not, because different sections serve different purposes. So far, so good. Then, how do you stop writing? Well, you may think that this is the easiest uh, part of it all, because you stop and there's no more time and you need to submit. And sadly, quite often, that's the case. But if uh, you have a, a well-structured work flow, uh, there are better ways. Uh, you, what you should remember is that academic writing is a design process, so it has no stopping rule, essentially. There's no way of saying, now the thing is finished. Because, essentially, you can always add more, you can always refine, you can always, you know, um, st change the structure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And therefore, it can be meaningful to be quantitative. This means breaking down the balance of the paper by approximating space for each section. Uh, this could be that, well, in a 4,000 words uh, paper, maybe the introduction is 400 words. Section A is, say, 1,000 words, so is section B. Then you have a discussion which may be slightly shorter, and then you have a quite brief uh, conclusion, perspectives, etc. And remember that you always have uh, references and your literature takes up some uh, of the word count as well, so that when you add everything up, you reach your 4,000 words. And here you should remember, if you use notes, some do, either in the form of uh, footnotes at the bottom of each page, or uh, if the format requires it, uh, it may be end notes at the end of the paper. Uh, such notes uh, should be included in the word count. So, another uh, indicator of when uh, to stop writing is when you have a reasonably full account of your topic. Uh, you may ask yourself, are concepts fully explained? Is it clear where I want to take my reader? Also, uh, a point to stop is when you have a convincing argument. And you may ask yourself, have I established a clear chain of arguments? Sometimes you may jump to conclusions as, as the phrase goes, and that's not a very good thing in an uh, academic paper. So uh, arguments should lead up to the conclusion. Uh, conversely, you may have uh, leads that are not followed up, you may have holes, lost points, or loose ends. Uh, obviously, they lead to nowhere and should not be in the paper, so either you tie the knot or you take uh, those parts out of the paper so they're not even there. And then you should test your read flow. This means rearranging sections. Uh, uh, when you rearrange sections, it may cause the logic of explanations and arguments to deteriorate, and you may do so all, uh, uh, ever so often, and you may not in the process uh, realize that, oh, the reason why this section came after the other one is because I tie a knot here. So if you do rearrange uh, the reflow, uh, and there may be many good reasons to do so, always make sure that, that the chain of arguments is still in place. Um, Otherwise, you will confuse your reader. Essentially, what this means is that you have to rewrite and rewrite again. Also, it's very recommendable to have someone reading your text to test your explanations and arguments, but also uh, to do a spell check and format check on print. And 
this may sound uh, superfluous, but it's actually so that there's stuff, even if you read your text a hundred times on the screen, once you print it out, suddenly uh, you see errors that you didn't see on screen, simply because the print resolution is much higher than your screen resolution, and, and suddenly the, the, the text stands out um, in a much clearer way. And uh, therefore, use, use correction marks in red ink or in the text and margin. Uh, so that you can later transfer them back into the, um, the, the digital text. Also, check your references, um, unless, you, of course, you use a reference manager. Uh, all coded references must be in the literature list, but no other, as already explained. Finally, there's a number of formalities that should be um, observed. You should uh, use a consistent and not too elaborate hierarchy of sections and subsections in terms of headings. Uh, it can be confusing uh, in a short text in particular if uh, the author uses a very complex hierarchy of first, second and third level uh, headings. Because uh, maybe it's clear to the, to the author why uh, the hierarchy is like that, but it may not be clear to the reader. So really keeping it simple is, is typically preferable to, 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 to making it complex, even though the complexity may be, may, may be, um, uh, may, may, may have a, uh, may be valid in some form. So, uh, and, and here of course, every, every word processor has an outline view. So, which you can use, which basically means that you, you view only so many levels of, of text when, when you format it, and then you can quickly overlook the hierarchy and the, the flow of your sections, and then you can expand the text again to see the full, to see the full text. Add your references correctly. It's quite important. Um, when you write, it should be clear uh, what part of your sentence or paragraph uh, is uh, referenced from s someone else and what is not. And in this sentence, Camillo City was primarily occupied with the vi visual appearance of the city, the Stadtbild, and this is where the, the, the reference goes in, and therefore failed to see the infrastructural demands of motorized transportation. So the first part of this section, a uh, uh, sentence, is is where city is actually referenced. This is what city did, whereas the second part of the sentence is the author's uh, evaluation of city's uh, position. And therefore, if you put the 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 reference at the end of the sentence, as you might think would be proper, then it would seem that the second half of the sentence is also referenced from Sitte, uh, whereas it isn't. So, uh, when you do separate quotations, uh, they should be italicized or indented or in a smaller font or in quotation marks, never more formatting at the same time and then it should always be followed at the reference. Sometimes you do inline citations. This means that the citation is part of a sentence that is in your text. But sometimes you do separate quotations. This means that you, you uh, do a carriage return, you start a new paragraph, and the paragraph holds only the citation. And Obviously, here you need to format the text in such a way that it's clear this is not part of your what you wrote. This is a citation. Uh, and, and therefore, um, you want to format it either by using italics or sometimes uh, it's indented so that the left margin is f uh, wider than in the remaining text or uh, it's put in quotation marks. But really you should not use more formatting at the same time because that would just be confusing. Uh, so use one format and use it consistently and always add the author uh, uh, 
uh, in a separate line, typically with a dash, so that it's clear this paragraph is a quotation from somewhere else, and this is the reference. Furthermore, inline quotations should be in quotation marks. Uh, when, that's when you put a, a citation directly in your own sentence and immediately follow it by the reference. Um, if words are omitted, maybe if you want to sort of incorporate your, your citation uh, uh, or your quotation into your own sentence, uh, you need to leave some words out and then you should use uh, three dots in a line which is called an ellipse, and it's actually a separate character on your, uh, on your keyboard, um, rather than three dots. Uh, and if words are added or capitalized, if it's changed, uh, you should always use hard brackets. Hard brackets indicate that this is a, a, this is a, 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 a variation or a change or something which is added to the original uh, quote. So in this case, you should always use hard brackets. What uh, was quoted here is uh, probably that uh, you was come uh, at the beginning of the sentence, so that would be a, be a, a capital Y, and the original quotation does not include the word always. Uh, so it would go, you should use hard brackets. But if you want to add something, always use hard brackets. And again, uh, put the quotation in quotation marks and add the reference. So, if on the other hand you use single words or basic concepts, you should just use single words, uh, single quotes. Uh, sometimes you, you, you borrow uh, words or concepts uh, from other authors and again you, 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 you reference them, but uh, you use only single quotes. Also, you should be consistent with your referencing system. Sort your list of references alphabetically and by date. This uh, is uh, because uh, that's how you reference your references in, uh, in line in your text. So if it goes Steiner 2021, uh, you want to be able to go to the to the reference uh, list of references and then just uh, file your finger down uh, to Steiner. And if there are several um, uh, articles by the same author, they will be organized by year, so that there is a clear connection between the way you put the reference in line in your text and the way it's sorted in the reference list. Because essentially, the reference list is a tool. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I had to share with you uh, on academic writing. Thank you. <laughs>